In April 1685 at Wigtown in Dumfries and Galloway, two sisters, Margaret and Agnes Wilson, and 63-year-old Margaret McLaughlin, were brought before the Justiciary Court. They'd been charged with rebellion at the Battle of Bothwell Bridge in June 1679 and the Battle of Airds Moss in July the following year, both false accusations, and for attending 20 house meetings and 20 field conventicles, which are outdoor sermons. At the time of the battles, Margaret Wilson would only have been around 12. Margaret McLaughlin was a widow. Her husband had been a carpenter, and both were well known for their piety in the area. The Wilsons were the daughters of well-off Episcopalian farmer Gilbert Wilson of Glenvernoch, near Newton Stewart, who'd embraced Charles II's reforms, but they, along with their brother Thomas, had chosen not to follow in their father's footsteps and remained strong covenanters. Their father tried to persuade them to change and accept the Scottish Episcopal Church, openly at least, but when they refused, he was forced to disown them by the authorities. The siblings then fled to the hills, finding shelter in caves, but in February 1685, the same month Charles II died, they secretly ventured back to Wigtown, while Thomas kept watch. Unfortunately, they were discovered, captured and thrown into a dungeon in Wigtown, known as the Thieves' Hole, before being transferred to the local prison. It's believed they had once found shelter with Margaret McLaughlin, and that was how they'd come to know her. Sheltering them would also cost her dearly, and when the sisters arrived at the prison, Margaret was already there, awaiting her fate. They were not the only ones to attend court on 13th April 1685. A fourth woman, a servant of a local nobleman, also appeared. She'd been accused of disorder and was sentenced to three consecutive days of public flogging, but her sentence backfired on the authorities. No one in the town came to watch, as they'd hoped, as they were disgusted by the sentence. Before the bench, the Wilson sisters and Mrs McLaughlin refused to swear an oath to the king, by then James VII, Charles's son. To say God save the king was to them like swearing allegiance to Satan. They were also told to renounce the covenant, but with their beliefs so strong, they simply couldn't do it. As a final act of defiance, all three women refused to kneel when the sentence was to be passed. The court was furious, and all three were sentenced to death. The Wigtown martyrs were to be tied to palisades fixed in the sand within the flood mark of the sea at the mouth of the Blednoch stream, and there to stand till the flood overflowed them and drowned them. Gilbert Wilson went to Edinburgh to the Privy Council, pleading for clemency for all three. Fourteen-year-old Agnes had her sentence commuted, due in part to her father paying a hundred pounds Scots bond for her. Pleas were also made for Mrs McLaughlin due to her age. Reprieves were written for the two Margarets, dated 30th April, and both were signed. It stated that the Privy Council do approve the execution of the sentence of death pronounced by the justices against the two women, and asked for the Lord's Secretaries of State, John Drummond, 1st Earl of Melfort, and George Saville, 1st Marquess of Halifax, 
to interpose with his most sacred majesty for his royal remission on them. The decrees, however, were ignored by Sir Robert Grierson of Lag. On 11th May 1685, both women were tied to stakes in the Solway Firth. Friends and relatives of Margaret Wilson pleaded with her to take the oath to save her life. While the tide began to swamp the 18-year-old, she was given permission to pray for the king, possibly in hope of a reprieve, but she still refused to renounce the covenant, remaining steadfast in her refusal to the end. As they waited for the tide to come in and drown them, family members and friends sang hymns and said prayers for the two women. Wilson even recited psalms and sang hymns. It's said that Margaret McLaughlin was tied to a stake slightly closer to the water, so young Margaret could see her drown. As she gasped for her life, the older woman's throat was cut by a soldier. Margaret Wilson's head was then forced under the water, and her throat was also cut. The bodies were retrieved, and the two women were buried together in the churchyard of Wigtown. Inscribed on Wilson's memorial are the names of the actors of this cruel crime, Grierson of Lag, hereditary sheriff of Kirkubrishire and member of Parliament for Dumfrieshire, Captain John Strachan, Major, although he was actually a captain, George Winram, who carried out the execution, and Sheriff Depute David Graham. Margaret McLaughlin states that by unjust law she was sentenced to die, again with the four names inscribed. A memorial to Margaret Wilson stands in the Old Town Cemetery in Stirling, and she was depicted in the pre-Raphaelite artist John Everett Millais' 1871 painting The Martyr of Solway. The two women weren't the only ones to be executed at Wigtown that year for their beliefs. Three Covenanters, William Johnson, a one-time gardener to Andrew Agnew of Shuchan, Chapman John Milroy and George Walker, a servant at Kirkcala, were all hanged in the early summer. Both Johnson and Milroy had been given shelter by Archibald Stewart, the Laird of Fintalach, and his wife, Marjorie Dunbar. He'd already been fined a thousand pounds for his Presbyterian sympathies, and by 1685 his wife had withdrawn from the parish church. The three accused had gone into hiding, and after many close shaves, were captured by Winram. All three declined to take the oath to the king, and for this were executed the following day. A memorial to them can also be found in the town. If you enjoyed this episode of Scotland's History, please like, comment and subscribe. Until next time, thank you for watching.